on this episode of Please Be Advised. Greg, Rebecca, and Cynthia will discuss non-disclosure agreements and what they mean for you and your business. Look at Donald Trump. Yeah. Speaking of Donald Trump. Speaking of. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to talk about the non-disclosure agreement for Omarosa? <laughs> for Wacky Omarosa. Give us a little background. A little background. Um, so the president, Donald, was it Donald J. Trump? He's Donald John. Not Donald my, John, right? Not my president. Donald John, not my president. <laughs> um, well, this is interesting. So she has her, her book that's going around, obviously. Um but apparently there was a non-disclosure agreement, but I'm reading now that she was offered a $15,000 a month job with the Trump re-election campaign after being fired from her White House job last December, but this job required her to sign a non-disclosure agreement. This is a claim by Amorosa, but would a non-dis- verified by the New York Post, by the way. But with the non-disclosure agreement, so, she, they're, so they're saying she can't talk. Well, the White House is claiming that she signed... A non-disclosure but does that, during the campaign, which carries over to her leaving public I mean, office. Of course, like any agreement, you have to read it um, mm-hmm. and see what the definition of confidential right. information is. Which um, that's true. You mm-hmm. know, always has certain exclusions. Assuming mm-hmm. you know it was properly negotiated, it has term limits, it has expansions, it has you know, and whether certain things fit into the definition. Um, but I think the bigger question that everyone's debating is. Um, in a private context, mm-hmm. um, when you are a private employee and you're a private contractor, you can um, negotiate away rights left and right. You can agree to things. But as a, she was not employed by Donald J. Trump in in her capacity as um, when she worked for the White House. So information that was disclosed to her in that capacity was not disclosed to her by Donald Trump. It was by the United States of America. Well, there are experts that are saying that this non-disclosure agreement is not valid exactly. because she's a public employee. But, but to be, be, did she sign it after she left the White House, though? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, she signed it before. She, according to the White House, all members of the West Wing signed a non-disclosure agreement while they were in the campaign. Mm-hmm. But th- that is so a, now why, why would that leaves, carry over to the White House? Well, that's the question. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, well... Experts are claiming that the courts will have to decide that. But I mean, a part of it, the information she's disclosing, who does it belong to? Whose information is it? Who has a right to object to it? I mean, if it is, you know, um, confidential information of Donald Trump, or is it, you know, information, uh, you know, that belongs to the government as her employer, disclosed to her by the government, in a sense, so that, um, you know, you know, and it's information of public concern, and you can't. That's a you know a, a sort of um, a certain. Con- you can't con- contract around. Well, be- beyond you know, the legalities of her alleged agreement, mm-hmm. how do we feel about non-disclosure agreements in business? And and maybe let us know about some of the legalities on that. Um, I mean, in a business context, they're absolutely a hundred percent necessary and um, necessary or legal. And legally enforceable. There's various different contexts. There's the employment context, um, where you have most employers always have them with their employees. And a lot of times, it's more to protect their clients' information than it is their own. Um, But sometimes they can be used as weapons in terms of indirect non-competes or non-solicitation. You have this concept of inevitable disclosure that um, if you go work for, even if you didn't sign a non-compete, as long as you have an NDA, if you go somewhere else that's a competitor, there's no way that you're not using the confidential information that you learned here, you know, so we're going to use that to enforce. So as an attorney, you think that non-disclosure agreements are good? Um, I mean, I, they're different contexts. I, who are you representing? Um, I guess as an attorney, you know, it's just whose perspective. But um, I don't like them to be used as weapons in an employment context. I don't like any non-competes in general in an employment context. Um, and I think that particularly when you have employment at will, the idea that, you know, unless you're talking about going from Coke to Pepsi and stealing the secret sauce, um, get over it. Um, well, can you tell us a little the difference between a non-disclosure and a non-compete? 
So um, a non-compete basically says you cannot work for, within a certain time after you leave, you can't work for a direct competitor. They're generally only enforceable within a limited geographic range and um, limited time. It varies by state. There are a few states who won't enforce them in any context. So is that similar to what happened with Live Nation? And I believe it was Live Nation previously. Um, I mean, there are certainly... Some of those concerts... Yeah, well, there's Beyonce also, oh, that, okay, so that's, that's um, also with the, the radius. Yes. Um, a lot of artists, when they book a festival or they do something like that, they say, um, they agree within so many months after this festival, you won't book another festival within this geographic mm -hmm. radius. Um, and they're generally defined on, you know, in terms of deciding what radius is reasonable. Traditionally, they looked at, well, you know where is this business operating and who is really likely to be a competitor but it gets distorted when now almost every business has a much broader national if not international scope in which they do business so you have some of these massive saying anywhere in the united states or europe you know or something like that where you've you've made it ridiculous and they say well that's really where our competitors are our competitor you know it used to be your competitors were in a more local lized um, place and then the idea was it's a reasonable restriction because if Think about if you're in a small town and there's two bagel stores in the town um, and people have a choice between two bagel stores. If you leave one bagel store and you go to the other bagel store and you tell them this is the, what they how they make their bagels so much better than your bagels, it really has potential to hurt that business and, and take away, I mean, a significant amount. And they're like, we taught you how to make this bagel and now you've stolen that. I mean, you know, and that's, it's really, and you had situations in the past where people would send people to go work for someone else on the idea to learn their secrets and come back. But it gets very distorted now when you have the competition landscape is not like that. People have a lot more choices, they have a lot more opportunities and employers can take advantage of that to try to overreach with these um, things. And then of course it becomes too limiting on the person. What are you crazy? Like, what do I do? I book concerts or I book, and you're telling me Live Nation had a, nothing in the state of California. I mean, you know, and they're like, well, that's our business. We have offices all over California and they were able to show a presence in various state, you know, so we could say, you know, and we're, we want to sell a concert where people in California want to see you. If they have multiple options to see you at all these concerts in any week, they have less of a reason to come to our concert. So, so tell me really quickly, non-disclosure, the difference. So non-disclosure is just about information and it's, how you define information and you have to be very careful in the agreement sometimes people say confidential information is only a written document where I wrote the word confidential on it oh. or um, an oral conversation that we have where I identified it as confidential at oh, that okay. time and followed up with a written memo saying the conversation we had on July 15th was confidential this can become you know extremely important particularly obviously in any M&A type context or even you know let's just say what happened with Elon Musk recently and I mean it's a little bit different but he was at his house with his girlfriend and there was another girl his girlfriend is some rapper and she had another girl who's apparently eavesdropping in the background hearing them talking about Tesla and taking it private and she went all out publicly and was like these people don't know what they're doing and he made up some bullshit and said we're taking it private and then said he had a, it's a violation of SEC rules when you're a public company to sort of make false statements and he said funding security tweeted that he didn't have the funding and went on a you know, whatever and she came out and said that um you know when you have a business and even if you're kind of talking to someone about maybe selling that business or maybe and your employees find out about that you know or markets react i mean there are major consequences you have to have methods of protecting information mm -hmm. um you know your trade secrets the things that make you competitive as a business and also that protect your business from mutinies from false information you know from so you, you certainly need you know um to have and so businesses can collaborate and not steal each other's information um you know protections in place um non-disclosure agreements but um you know in a and they're give people the freedom in the same way it's the same logic if we didn't have attorney client privilege the whole thing wouldn't work because clients would be afraid to tell their attorneys things and then their attorneys couldn't properly protect them mm -hmm. you know all of that um and so you know you need to have protections for information but the the idea is um you know the context in which they're used um and i think that in general people have a very 
the public doesn't understand them um, in terms of, you know, their, uh, is this restricting, God? we have free speech, we have free speech, how can you, you know, and it, um, there's a very big difference between a commercial context and um, a public right to know and information and journalism and all of that. And then also, um, I think it's slightly different when it's about um, employment and when it's about... Um, yeah, employment is the issue. So that's where that's where it gets it gets icky. So Rebecca, as a lifelong employee, <laughs> as a lifelong in employee all your for, years for a decade earth. of working, <laughs> and for your future, how do you feel about non-disclosure and non-compete? I mean, like it makes sense in the context of uh, makes sense in the context of like my our clients' work. Like I'm not gonna go if I go and work at a different law firm. I'm not gonna talk about our clients and their what's going on with their agreements and what record labels and publishing and distribution. Like, I'm not going to go talk about that. But I feel like with personal matters and in relationships between employees, there shouldn't be non-disclosure agreements. That doesn't make any sense. So like, say, that's what Trump's been doing, though. Trump's been saying, you can't talk about anything that we've talked about ever. Right. He's, he's just overbearing. Yeah, he's so ridiculous. let's say that you, as an employee, sign a, or they try to make you sign a non-compete agreement that says you cannot work for our competitor for a year. After and now that's the only thing that you know how to do and make money. Are you okay with that? I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. I mean, I guess there's just a level of trust that you'd have to have with people. But there is um, no trust. They're making you sign that agreement. No, I know. I'm saying, why Why should you at the end of the day? Like, are people like, you, I'm not going to go. You have to. You have to. I mean, no, I, I would say there's not one company or one, you know, uh, at a very minimum, you're going to get an NDA. Yeah. Um, and that's just, as a company, as a what, you have to put that in. Now, whether the company chooses to enforce it right. um, is a totally different. Now, now, that's Cynthia, true. Do you think that a uh, non compete agreement that, in your opinion, that is doesn't allow you to work for a competitor for a year is that enforceable i think? think that um in this it's extremely industry specific we have to look at how limited is it how small is your industry how big is your industry what yeah, kind right. of opportunities are there also you know um somewhat geographic scope well let's but, pretend we have a tech startup okay um, and they, Rebecca's going to work for them in some capacity. I'm at Lyft, and then so I'm working at Uber. To say you can't work for any other tech company is Correct. ridiculous. Okay. To say... Like, I can't go from Lyft to Uber? Yeah. That makes no ridiculous. sense. Yeah, that makes... I agree you with know, that. You know, it has to be narrowly tailored, I think, and... Um, it's not ridiculous? No, I think I, I that makes think sense. It's, depending on what your job is. Yeah. Like, so, if I'm customer support, like, yeah, go from one I also think it has to, to be other. tied to some extent... Now, what to... if that's her? What if that is her expertise, and that's how she makes a living? Well, so, so part now... of the, the question, I think, it has to be tied to um, the, the, the amount of time you've spent at the company. I think is a good way to do it. I mean, did you have this knowledge before you got here? And this is not something that we Correct. gave you, and you're just continuing on with your like. So it's sort of been um, adjudicated across the board. Non competes for lawyers are unenforceable because you have put the money in your, you know, it's a, a body of law, law school, this is what you do, this is, you know, your profession, you have... Um, you invested in yourself. You've invested and, yeah. in yourself and in the knowledge and in the, the manner of thinking and the way of doing things across is not unique enough in any law firm to say you can't work for another so law So that, that takes me to another idea. What, let's say that she's an attorney mm -hmm. who becomes general counsel for a tech startup and they make her sign a not compete saying she cannot work for another the attorneys is different because they also say that the client information is protected by your attorney client privilege mm -hmm. so that you cannot use that anyway so that yeah. you therefore don't need a non compete because you have that whereas outside of other professions that do not have attorney client privilege you need some protection for the information but i would say so you're a software engineer like you can do you know it has to be very very narrowly like whatever what's your job at uber you could maybe, I wouldn't say just because you worked at Uber, you can't work at Lyft. But if you worked at Uber being the person who designs the congestion pricing structure for New York City, you can't be the congestion pricing structure, the exact same job, doing yeah. the exact same thing for a direct competitor for a limited period of time is reasonable. I can see that being for marketing, too. Like, if I'm a marketer for Bumble, I can go be a marketer for Tinder. I like mean, I can see and that the idea somewhere. that you're like you are not going. The to... profession is to be a marketer. 
Yeah, if yeah but marketing. if it's for a direct competitor in yeah. the same market, and I can just say knowing people who work in marketing and have gone from direct competitors, without a doubt, 100%, they're using the techniques and, and part yeah. of what they're getting hired for. Oh, 100%. Because we want you to tell us what's going on. What's going on the other side, yeah. And, and the idea that you're... It's not just a coincidence. Oh, I just so, happened to be applying for this job. Yeah. Like, whatever. So for, for business owners, what's the the preferred amount of time for a non-compete? I mean, the maximum enforceability is generally understood to be two years. That's a long. Two years, wow. Yeah, that's maximum, um, you know, where um, that now, will be enforced under certain circumstances. Now, some it really depends on the contract, too, because... Some of them can be overreaching, right? Yes. As you said. And it depends. Certain states are called blue pencil states and certain states are not. Meaning if you overreach, the court will cut it back down to what's reasonable. Blue pencil it, make it, mm. re- and do it. Other states say if you overreach, that's it. You and right, what have they, and they toss the what have they in. decided oh. is reasonable? Um, so it's state by state basis mm. and often um, industry by industry where you, if you actually enforce it, you will get into an argument about case law and precedent and trying to prove this exact circumstance, this is what's reasonable and this is what's not. Um, and, you know, ultimately probably comes down to lawyering and, right. you know, all of, and, and time and cost and money. Um, but, like, California will not enforce them at all. I believe Massachusetts recently just passed a law that they will not enforce them either. New York will. Oh, California won't enforce them? No, California is the most anti-non-compete state of every well, state. Well, huh. it's probably the most liberal state yeah. in the nation. So I could go work from Uber and Lyft. I'm assuming those are both based in California. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so what I'm hearing here is employers don't really have any reason not to make them as overreaching as possible. Well, it depends. So it depends what state they're in, mm-hmm. because if you have a funeral blue pencil state, they'll overreach, and then worse comes to worse, the court will pull it back. Um, if you're not in a blue pencil state, they worse. But I will say 90% of employers have no intention or desire they're not going to get in a lawsuit over this. What they're going to do is call your next employer, um, and I've had many clients actually who have um, have done this. Um, they find out that somebody left who was fairly high up and has gone to work for a competitor. They will call the employer, uh, send a legal note. I want to put you on notice that this employee is subject to this agreement. Therefore, I'm going. You know, you shouldn't be hiring them, and I'm going to sue you too if you hire this person or I'm going, depending on the industry and some tech, I'm going to have a very good argument that any tech that you develop is a, is a infringement of my IP because I'm going to have an argument that it was developed by mm, my employee true. while he was here and that he brought here. It's going to taint your products. That's so and, true. Um, and tech in particular, I had a lot of clients made that said, we won't sue on the employment. We're going to sue on the IP. And we're going to say that it's that you infringed our IP and we're going to prove that the ideas for whatever you developed came from us. Every employer says that risk, no person is worth that risk. No. You're out and they won't hire you. So, so it's really a, most employers put it in not to enforce it. And they don't, most employers don't even want to do that. They want to put it in as a deterrent to the employee not to leave. They want the employee to feel that they do not have the freedom to just jump ship so easily. Mm. Um, and it's a, it's a certain type of protection that they should put in. Yeah. I mean, I would, you know, and, and now, so even employees side. who feel it's not enforceable, they think twice a little bit before they leave because of it. So representing the employer, you should always put it in there. But So, rep, so representing the flip side, yeah. do you have any advice that without giving away too much for employees who are faced with mm-hmm. the proposition of signing a... Um, I mean, it all depends on your leverage in the situation. If you have a job and or have other offers and you can negotiate, um, you know, I would say it doesn't hurt to ask. I would try and negotiate it. And sometimes you can get a, just by trying to negotiate, they'll be like, here, we'll throw a little bit more money at you just to shut up and sign it. (laughs) Um, And we've had some who come back and said, okay, you know, fine, I'll sign it. Um, We've had some where, look, this is a very small industry. I'm coming from a competitor. You know, I might go somewhere else. I, you know, I I don't want to have this hanging over my head. And they really do think, and and it is something to negotiate. And I would recommend negotiating it um, just so that you don't have that heading over your head. Because if there is a real possibility that you will go to a competitor, 
your employer very well may call them and tell them about it and it may prevent you from getting your next job but you have to have leverage I mean you have to have the ability that what if you fight this and your employer says I'm, I'm put off by it because I feel like you're already looking to your next job you're already out the door you're not committed and well how would you respond to that anymore. would you just say well I need to future proof my no, you know, I mean, you, you, I'm 100% here. I don't, I mean, one question is, do they make it apply across the board or only if you quit? Do they make it apply even if you're fired? You know, no, you could point. say, you know, this is an employment at will situation and I'm fully committed just like you're fully committed, but, you know, things happen, you never know, you know, and then maybe you get a carve out it only applies if you leave without good reason or something like that. Okay. Um, but, or maybe only, you know, after a certain period of time, you know, let's build up a trust relationship and, you know, I understand that, you know, I want to be here, I'm going to be here, let's put a time limit on it. And you can usually say, you know, I'm going to be here for the next three or four or five years, but who knows what's going to happen seven years from now. And, you know, to have this hanging over my head, you know, that is a burden on me. And if, you know, sometimes you can say, if you want to, you know, compensate me in some other way, you know, maybe I'm open to that, but you are, you're taking something from me. You're taking an opportunity, um, you know, and it really depends on the industry. You can say, you know, in our particular industry, you know, um, it's a small industry, um, you know, the opportunities are limited. Um, this is where I want to be. This was my first choice. This is where I chose to be. But, you know... Um, so, the if, gist I'm getting here is if you're a receptionist, maybe... Not <laughs> maybe not as important. Yeah. Yeah, but it's case by case. if you're a VP... Yes. Possibly oh, very important. Oh, 100%. No company is going to ever care to enforce it unless they feel you're high enough up that you, yeah. you're, you know... And most of the time, they only want to enforce it because they're angry that you left. Oh, really, so retaliation. It really... In, in practice, it's... They're angry that you left. I don't know how much they're actually really scared about losing their yeah. stuff. I mean, sometimes they are, but most of the time, if you get to the bottom of it, there's an emotional hurt there that they feel betrayed, that they feel like I thought, like every time I've had a client that wants to enforce it, it's, I thought we were in this together. Oh. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, gave them my, you know, creativity and my thoughts and we work together to build this company and i would assume that that's leaving. smaller type companies that are like single owner no even some owners. bigger ones because the c-suites c-suites mm. are still small like mm. i have some public company that tried to enforce it their employee left to go to another massive public company where i'm like it's basically like saying you can't work you know what i mean but the, the c-suite um or sometimes in tech in these little bubbles of the people really working on the high level stuff together at the end of the day it's four or five people that you know really felt they were part of a team and they felt betrayed and i will also assume that they probably have a policy in place that they will enforce these exactly negotiate these contracts I mean, and as a company time. you know you you make that a general policy right. or you don't so that you don't have selective enforcement mm -hmm. i mean anything should always be a policy so that yeah, because if you selective enforce then we can it did detracts from your argument. Yeah. Right. Well, and it also your your argument right, for enforcement circle. is always that it's the court only will enforce it if it's necessary to protect your trade secrets. And when they see that the motive is not really to protect your trade secrets, but it's more personal, then that then you lose credibility. So if that let's just go into that scenario really quickly. If that were to happen, can there be a counterclaim for discrimination or well, I, I, wrongful? You quit in the situation, right? So no. So there's no damages. There's no damages, okay. but um, I mean, you might be able to get attorney's fees for a, gotcha. you know, a, a, <laughs> that's our <laughs> legal advice <laughs> cost. But um, yeah, I mean, I think you know it goes it goes both ways too in the employment because you say I thought we were in this together and I felt betrayed. You say I thought we were in this together. I thought you were going to treat me better as an employee. Why did I leave? <laughs> that's a topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we were in this together, I wouldn't have left if I felt that I was. You know. Topic for another day. Cool. Treated well. All right. Thanks.